Hi, I'm Stephen John Drew from Better Podcasting, a proud member of the Guinea Geek Network, just like the show you're listening to now. The opinions expressed are those of the individual hosts. Check out all the other geeky podcasts at gunnageeknetwork.com and get ready because geekiness begins in three, two, one. Stand by for a brand new episode of All Things Good and Nerdy. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode 403 of the official All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. Why I tossed official on there, I don't know. But this is recorded live on Sunday, May 17th, 2020. I'm Chris, joining me as per normal, my uh, fellow inmates here in the Insane Asylum, one Willie D. Nelson. That's where we are? Yeah. Oh, makes sense. And also Next. joining me with hopefully a bit more energy, Anthony Bachman. Wearing nothing but a robe and a smile. Fuck pants. I'm not even wearing a shirt today. <laughs> You're welcome, ladies. Are you wearing a Snuggie? No, it's a robe with a hood. It's just a big-ass robe that's got a hood. Like a big fucking hood. A Snuggie? <laughs> Nuggie. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> That was it. Willie shot his one shot for the day. He's done. And I ruined it. With the hood big enough, I can go back to sleep right now. <laughs> we can't also hear you very well. You might need you. to shift your mic a little bit, too. <laughs> yeah, you get muffles. Well, my head was under a hood. Of course it was muffled. I don't think that was the issue. <laughs> it was. It was. So it's like this... somebody's got a case of the muffles. What's what's the case of the muffles, Willie? Explain this to me. Well, for twenty bucks, I'll show you firsthand. I don't oh. want to know that well. I just want to know what it is. Hey, man, this is seventy five percent off too, man. You better take it while you can get it. I I don't want it. I thought I'd said this already. No, you're not gonna explain it to me. Do I have to go and like Urban Dictionary this? Because I'm afraid to, actually. I'm honestly afraid to put this in Urban Dictionary. This, is, not, this is an audio podcast, Willie, really, staring at me. Does not <laughs> convey much imagery. Oh, that's because that's my internet's uh, crapping out and you're all going robot -y. We are <laughs> so Cylons. It, his picture finally works and now he can't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect. Seems appropriate. No, Indeed before, it does. Before we get into things, how things been going, guys? Anything exciting going on? Anything? I need to live vicariously because, honestly, I didn't leave my house but to go to the grocery store and to go pick up Chinese food in this last week. So I need something exciting going on. In the last week, I didn't even go grocery shopping, so I haven't left my house literally at all in the last seven days. See, I'm in trouble when it comes to groceries this week because I went to the store on my original plan, and I've talked about it on this show my current plan right now, and we're not sponsored by them, but I use a service called HelloFresh, which delivers me the stuff for three meals a week. Well, that normally comes in on Saturdays. Normally ships on Thursday afternoon, Friday morning. Normally arrives on Saturday. So I'm sitting there about 3 p.m. yesterday. I go, where the hell is my box from HelloFresh? And I look. I'm like, I did get charged for it. I did get a shipping notification. Oh, what's going on here? So I pull up my FedEx tracking it's some, for some reason, went from New Jersey to Atlanta, Georgia, I think it is, and won't be delivered until Monday in the evening. And I went, I don't think the two ice packs they put in there to keep all of the, uh, the meat products fresh are still going to be any good. <laughs> this is a problem for me. And I went, well, let me see what their support channel says. And here's where, well, kudos to them. I explained the problem within less than five minutes. They went, oh, yeah, that, that's a problem. That food probably won't be any good. Here, we're going to credit you $69 for next week's account. Or next week's shipment. And I said, oh, perfect. So they didn't charge me for it. Whenever it gets here, I can probably take the fresh produce out of it. And it might be okay. We'll see. But yeah, the meat is toast. That ground beef and the ground pork and the sausage that's in there. Absolutely toast. But kudos to them for uh, taking care of the problem. And less than five minutes. Well, yeah, we're having weird shipping issues due to COVID-19. And it's probably all FedEx's fault. So it's probably just pushing the bill to FedEx. To be like, hey, you guys screwed up. You owe us the cost of this. But still, yeah, yeah, because you got to figure they built their business around the uh, supply chains as they were 
figuring out the quickest way to get each package to somebody. Right. And then, yeah, with delays right now, like, oh, no, that flight's got to go to Atlanta first. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's probably that it got put on the wrong uh, plane or something like that. Because the way these things seem to work, at least with HelloFresh and, like, Blue Apron and the competitors, is they've got a few different distribution hubs around the country. So that they can get things to you in, like, one-day shipping. So they can get away with putting it in a uh, cooler bag, basically, with a couple ice packs inside that keep everything cold. Because yeah. that'll keep for about a day. But it's not going to keep from Friday until, I don't know, what is it, Monday? That's problematic. That's pretty problematic. I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends on how well they're sealed, how well those ice packs hold up. You know, it might be okay. So they're in their they're in their fall sla- they're in their spring packaging right now because the packaging changes based on the seasons. Because obviously, it's going to have to if they're going to put it on your front door for potentially eight hours while you're gone. So, like in the summer when I had them before, it was like a styrofoam cooler inside that held all of the stuff with ice packs, and that I would be less worried about. This right now is like a, a cardboard bag with a little bit of reflective material on it that has one ice pack Uh, the meat another ice pack and then the bags with all the produce and stuff on top of it so i don't know that that's insulated enough that my food would hold out so right now they're not in their most sturdiest of packaging right they they haven't gone to their summer packaging yet where in it's been years past since i had them in the summer but it would sit it would get delivered at like 8 a.m on a friday when everyone's left for work and the sun beats on the front end of my house from about 1 p.m. till, I don't know, 8 p.m. in the summer. And I would get that box and the free, the freezer packs would still be frozen when I opened them up to unload the box that evening. So they, they just haven't quite okay. adjusted to the new setup of things. Hmm. I mean, either way, it's great to know the customer service was on the ball and took care of it. So that's nice. I think Willie is still having connectivity issues. Uh-oh. We'll turn off so, this camera for a moment. And when someone, comes back, Skype, someone sniped to Skype. Here we were just talking about the fact that things looked like they were working. That was my mistake. <laughs> my mistake. That's true. We, we, should ne- we should never say things look good. Willie just wanted to go back to bed. Although I did miss Stephen's comment earlier. If you want to use HelloFresh, use promo code Chris is Fresh. evidently. Chris is With fresh. a question mark. Yeah. It's, is Fresh? Fresh? Well, I did shower yesterday afternoon, so relatively fresh. I didn't shower this morning since I took an afternoon shower. So, go team. I mean, in today's world, it's kind of a uh, an accomplishment when you remember to take a shower, I think. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've already had a couple of days where I didn't shower. I just like, no, not doing nothing today. I like, got anywhere. up, moved from my bed to my chair, and just turned on TV and... Eh. Just vegged. <laughs> And the only upside is I'm watching a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Lily, we see you. We're waiting for the NDI feed to catch up with you again. So yeah, 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 yeah. Can you at least hear me? I can hear you. For some reason, it hasn't updated the NDI feed. It should hopefully come back here in a second. If not, we'll figure it out. I'm a Muppet now. You're a Muppet now. Yeah, and I'm also tired of this. I had Lily to get up. Muppet. Yeah, I had to get up and plug in the wired connection. I'm sorry. I'm not really. happy with that. I'm sorry. If it makes you feel <laughs> any better, at least it froze on a good image of you. Did it now? Yeah, it's an image one. of me. Good <laughs> and me don't go together. Okay, fair point. Fair point. I don't know how to make this restart without restarting the recording software, so we might just have to go with a static willy this week. I'm all right with that. Or I'll see if it lets me add him back in as a source. I don't know. I'm all right with that. Steven said he'll ring a bell for you. Thank you. All those flip-top head Canadians. You know you can't trust them. Yeah, I don't know why the feed didn't restart this time. Normally it does. I apologize, Willie. We're going to have you frozen this week, it would appear. Eh, Even my image is frozen for me, but a different one. It's more angry looking. Mm. (laughs) More natural looking. It's weird because I have an image coming from you right now, no problem, but... Whatever oh. Skype did it is just kind of choked. When I don't see the image you're seeing, I only see this. It's it's the Hello Fresh Willy. He's yeah. got uh, his freezer packs on and his face ain't moving. He's all froze up. <laughs> He's all froze up. He's all froze up. 
See, if Willie was my HelloFresh thing when it arrived on Monday, it would all still be good for me. Really? I'd say that's some rotten meat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't trust cooking and eating that. Uh-uh. That <laughs> shit's dirty. <laughs> And once again, on an audio podcast, Willie's just making faces at us. <laughs> but nobody can tell because his and now feed's don't even, frozen. Not even the live people can see it because his face <laughs> is frozen on screen. So it's just for us. It's literally just for us. This isn't faces. This is one face. <laughs> oh, poor Willie. Fair enough. Poor Willie. I know it's going to make him feel better, though. If we yeah, as it, like Draftsman said, we don't know where Willie's been. We're not eating that. Yeah. We- <laughs> I know what'll make Willie feel better, though, and that's us moving things along so he's a little closer to going to bed. So here we go. Uh... Live from the ATG and Studios on uh, the internet, it's the news of the week. Welcome, everyone, to the News of the Week. It's that part of the show where we run down what's in our minds. Some of the most interesting uh, geeky and or nerdy news to have popped up here in the past week or so. Share it with you guys who are watching live and offer our very insightful commentary on it. Because if there's one thing we've been accused of on this show, it's being very insightful. Damn right. Willie's so insightful, he just dropped off the internet. <laughs> we got him back, I think. But we can't hear him. <laughs> now he's on mute. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I muted myself by accident, <laughs> but I tried to reset my camera. Now my camera's working. That's something. We'll figure it out eventually. Right I now, don't care. it is just, if you want, I can put it on one of the static images of you instead of this video feed. It's up to you. I don't really care. Oh, well, I mean, he might if I turn on, uh, what is it, willy2.j? No, it's willy1.jpg. There he is. Why do you have, why are there multiple? I'm just going to let it go. Well, there's multiple <laughs> because it was a gag. Because at one point in time when you weren't here, we put up the I was an ugly effing child picture and decided we shouldn't keep that running all day long and then just went over to your one that we use in the outro, which is this JPEG. No, that was, that's a younger Willie. A younger looking Willie. Well, I mean, it was about, what, four years ago now at this point in time? But he's always handsome. But up, but up, up. I love how we all no sold that. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, for uh, the audio listeners, you you kind of screwing them over. Yeah, we did screw you over, audio listeners. It was literally us just staring blankly at Willie as he made that gag. It is something that when I truncate silence, you guys won't notice. <laughs> you see, I'm trying to turn this to an ASMR uh, podcast, so let's do that for everybody. I don't get ASMR. Me either, but people like it. I mean, other than I got these uh, headphones, which I'll eventually be talking about, that make a very nice clicking sound. Ooh. Ooh. The, the only ASMR I've enjoyed is the one that uh, uh, Kevin Smith did as Silent Bob. Have you seen that one? No. It's ASMR of Silent Bob smoking weed. <laughs> so it's him like opening a pack a wrap of papers and open up a, a canister of weed from his weed company. And the whole time he's doing it with a microphone that's super close. That's picking up all the noise. And he sits there and rolls a joint and then fires it up and smokes it. And he never says anything. I was like, Oh, uh, that works. The, 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 the current modern, uh, Marcel Marceau doing it, doing his version of ASMR. We'll it be hearing, bad. we'll be more hearing more about silent Bob and the, what I've been getting into. Oh. Foreshadowing. According Bob to news. our chat room, Willie doesn't do ASMR. He just does S and M podcasts. Uh oh. Tell us more, Willie. S and M. S and M. Mm hmm. S and M. S and M. S and M. My brain is being very dumb well, today. We'll come back to Willie here in a little bit once he figures out what those podcasts are he's been doing. Until then, let's <laughs> toss things over to me where I'll do some news. So we live in a world now where anytime a new show is announced, we get a little excited and then we go, oh, wait, because of COVID-19, God knows when we're actually going to see this television program. Because I don't know if you guys had seen, for instance, uh, Fox's upcoming fall schedule. All of their live action shows, unless it's something that's pre-filmed already, have been pushed off to 2021. So we're going to be seeing a lot of things get announced 
but not happening to next year because of, you know, coronavirus, plague concerns, pandemic concerns, things like that. I will be the first to admit on this channel, and I've said it multiple times, I've been fairly critical of CBS All Access, especially how they basically said, we're going to put Star Trek on here just to make people buy our service. I still have my concerns with that, despite having bought it for two months to watch all of Star Trek Picard. Great series, by the way, if you're a Trek fan, I highly suggest you go check it out. They did announce that there is another Star Trek series that will be coming directly to CBS All Access. CBS gave a series order to Star Trek Strange New Worlds. This is a brand new series set aboard the original USS Enterprise and follows the adventures of Captain Pike, Spock, and Number One as they explore the galaxy. They will have Anson Mount, Ethan Peck, and Rebecca Romaine reprising their roles from Season 2 of Star Trek Discovery, where they appeared in all of those roles. Now, they didn't commit to whether it will take place before or after Enterprise and Care of the Discovery. It's simply being described as, quote, in the decade before Captain Kirk boarded the USS Enterprise as they explore new worlds around the galaxy. So, uh, new Star Trek series coming. Another prequel one, which I, I'm not... From what everyone has said, Anson Mount, Rebecca Romain, Ethan Peck were all very good in their roles. I haven't watched Star Trek Discovery yet because part of what I wanted was Trek that was moving forward, which is kind of why I was more intrigued by Picard. The fan excitement I've seen around this because people were thrilled with how Anson Mount portrayed Christopher Pike has me going, huh, maybe I will go check this out because it sounds kind of interesting. Number one? That was the only name that character had. It was uh, the first officer on the original Enterprise that in OG Trek and the original pilot was played by Mage L. Barrett, who later became Mage L. Barrett Roddenberry, Gene Roddenberry's wife. So it's a prequel to Austin Powers? <laughs> no, it is. And Robert Wagner is number two? Everything is a prequel to Austin Powers. Come on now, you know Fair. that. Okay. Are we a prequel to Austin Powers? Yes. I'll take it. Willie, you are Austin Powers' great-great-grandson. We're going to call you <laughs> Willie Powers. I mean, some people already do. Really? Oh, yeah. Who calls you Willie Powers? Because I'd like to get them on the line and interview them. Do you really want to go down this joke <laughs> path? I want to go down this joke path, Willie. I'm doubling down. Who calls you Willie Powers? I was just doing a one-off joke. Chris wants to dive deep into it and talk about Willie's dick, apparently, because that's what no, all no, is going. No, 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 no. That's was all not... it's going. No, There's I nowhere was... else for it to go. I didn't know whether you were going to turn it into like some kind of Austin Powers riff. I did not assume that this was going to turn into a let's talk about Willie's wang moment. <laughs> you should always assume that, Chris. Come on Thank now. you. Thank I mean, you. Bachman at least, knows. At least I have a bump <laughs> set aside for things like this. We should probably, you know, do actual show stuff instead of talk about Willie's dick. Willie, you're the one that took this down the dick path. It wasn't me. Uh, Bachman, you backed me up before. You want to back me up again? I mean, all, all I know is that you you both have islands, and I'm assuming they both have dick paths on them. So, like, you you both keep taking the dick path. What? Nope. I got a nature path. I got a nature path also with a Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex in it. Uh huh. Yeah. Mine just has nature. You, you you both got dick bass. Mine has just, flowers just, just and a, trees and a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Weird ass turnip drug addicts. With your dick pass. I only bought four thousand turnips today. <laughs> only, <laughs> only bought four thousand. Yeah, I I only farmed two hundred thousand pieces of cobalt last night. Oh, you can't farm anything. I can't because I play No Man's Sky, not Animal Crossing. Well, I'm talking about Animal Crossing. I guess you can farm flowers. You don't farm turnips? No, you, no, buy, you them. buy them. You have to buy them on only from 7 a.m. till 12 p.m. I thought it was 5 a.m. That's a weird You were probably game. right. I don't know. Uh, Draftsman in the chat room was saying, I'm apparently getting all of the DC stuff with my HBO Now subscription so I can finally watch all that because I guess, what is it, the 27th, so we're like 10 days away, or the 26th, I can't recall which date, HBO Max drops. And if you already have an HBO subscription, you get it for free and it has a bunch of HBO content in addition to, I guess, all the DC Universe contents folded into it, a bunch of CW shows, uh, Friends, if that's your jam. There's a boatload of content in there. But, yeah, if you have an HBO sub of some kind, you'll be getting HBO now, which allows you to get the DC television programs and cartoons and stuff that have been exclusive to the DC Universe app. I'll probably forget and 
have to be reminded to install the app when it comes out. But yeah, and I have heard that the Harley Quinn cartoon is really, really good. And very adult because there's cursing. Oh no. Well, goddamn. I just a fair warning for those that may have children. We do know there are people with children who have watched our show before with said children. If you probably shouldn't children. watch anything with Harley Quinn. They they shouldn't, but fair. fucking people are stupid and still call her relationship goals. Uh, most people have backed off of that one for now at least. Yeah, the ones that have functioning brains. But that's not the majority of the audience. It's true. Draftsman's plans, though, are to watch Young Justice, <laughs> Harley Quinn, and Doom Patrol. And I am actually looking forward mm-hmm. to being able to watch the latest season of Young Justice because I couldn't because I didn't have HBO, or excuse me, DC Universe, and it was exclusive to that service. So, yeah, I'll get to watch that now, which is exciting. Highly recommend Doom Patrol. And I yeah, I watched, the, been... yeah, I watched the pilot of all of them when they put them out for free on the DC app. Isn't and yeah, the Doom Patrol pilot was solid. And Swamp Thing was on there, but they canceled it, and now the CW picked it up, assuming I Now you're correctly. going into my news of the week? I didn't see that as your news. <laughs> it's called a segue, Bachman. <laughs> well, when I looked at the notes, that was not on there. But yeah. I added it because the one thing I have was just one more casting news. Well, then so. I'll toss it to you to tell us more about it then. <laughs> yeah, because the CW, who uh, speedily wrapped up the, the Flash season and turn their mid-season finale into the season finale. So Flash is over for the season. They're uh, wrapping all the shows that they had going that had finished uh, live production but were still in post-production because, of course, the CW shows are mainly superhero, uh, mainly DC, and mainly involve a lot of fucking post-production because they got to do special effects with you know a time-traveling ship and a boy that runs fast. And so uh, the Flash wrapped up. They wrapped up, I think... Everything that was in production has been done. I think we might get like one one or two more episodes of uh, Supergirl and Batwoman. But other than that, no more new CW shows for the season. So to kind of fill out their catalog, since Stargirl is finished filming and is in post-production, will be coming out in a couple of months. They wanted to add to their catalog. So CW went and bought the one other DC show that for some reason... Apparently, everybody loved, but nobody liked, and was canceled before it went live on the DC Universe app because of complaints about the amount of money it costs to maintain a swamp in a warehouse, apparently. Because I guess nobody thought that if you do a show called Swamp Thing, you'd actually have to build a set that was a swamp and then keep it. (laughs) So, uh... They did a, the James Wan produced Swamp Thing, did one season on the DC Universe app and was literally canceled before the first episode was released because nobody shoots themselves in the foot better than DC. And then by the time it was done, it got uh, some massive acclaim, like picked up a huge fan base, had a lot of people talking about how great the show was. And um, Mark Pedowitz, the CW president, picked it up. And um, in this article on Bloody Discussion, they asked what happens if it picks up a massive audience at the CW. And right now he just said, at the moment, it's just the one season. I do know if we, I do not know if it would come back, but obviously we want to be in a discussion with Warner Brothers and CW, but this time Swamp Thing is just the episodes we have. So those of us that couldn't watch the one season of Swamp Thing because it was only on the DC Universe app now get to watch it on the CW because, well, they need shit to put on the air. And it seemed yeah. weird that the the one show that was instantly canceled on the DC Universe app, which apparently is all going to be canceled because it's all going on HBO Max. But they haven't which, said that yet, which is where it gets really confusing what their yeah. plans are. Well, because, yeah, no one shoots himself in the foot like DC. And, of course, yeah. nothing says DC Comics like the app name HBO Max. What? It fucking makes no sense. Yeah, because yeah, it's HBO and Cinemax <laughs> merging together. But it's not yeah, Cinemax, though. Cinemax is a CBS product. I know. I, yeah. I know. That's why it's what? Yeah. <laughs> it's a giant fucking pile of sh- shitty marketing. So now they have three HBOs. Oh, wait, HBO Go I got now it. and Max. Yep. I got it. They had the naming convention, the same ones as Microsoft has for their Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Well yeah. played. The, ne- the next app will be called Skinemax, and it'll just be even more confusing. And I just want to state, I'm not being a fanboy. Xbox is a fantastic machine of itself, but the naming—I just have a problem with the naming. It's so dumb. Yeah, their naming convention is dumb. But yeah, 
to to beat them at that, yeah, the HBO Max app that apparently has all things DC will maybe someday have all things DC. Nobody fucking knows. But yeah, so Swamp Thing is coming to CW this fall. So those of us that haven't seen it on the DC Universe app will get to watch it on the CW as a new live show. But I mean, so before you move on to your next news story, why that's well, important, it, you sort just of know hit. going in that it's already ended. Right. It's already a show that's been canceled. Right. So <laughs> you, you touched on the fact already. We should emphasize a little bit that it's a canceled show they're putting on TV. So they have stuff to do because they did just announce like all of the CW superhero programs. Yes. They're not coming back till 2021. Just like I yep. touched on with Fox's schedule and things like that, because they don't know when they're going to be able to resume production and filming. They pushed everything back to 2021. And so nothing new happens there. And they did also announce that this year's crossover is not as ambitious as crisis on infinite earths. I don't know if you had seen that one yet or not. Oh Batman. yeah. They talked about it on a, uh, uh, fat man beyond. They said they're literally just doing it with two shows. It's only going to be the new, uh, Superman and Lois Lane. I think that's the title and yep. Batwoman crossed over because, well, at this point, as as Mark Bernard put it, it's post Endgame. You can't go bigger than Crisis on Infinite Earths. And so what you do is you reset, you do a small story, and I mean it's kind of genius if you think about it because what it should be is World's Finest. It's Batman and Superman. It's just well, it's Batwoman and the new show Superman and Lois Lane. So yeah, when that one comes out, I mean the crossover is going to be pr- probably very small, probably you know like two three episodes. But it's not going to involve the Legends. It's not going to involve Flash. It's not going to involve um, Black Lightning. So, yeah, I mean, and I have, I'm not even sure. I think Black Lightning wrapped up as well. Like, yeah, everything everything's canceled and delayed and pushed off because, yeah, were, were they all, were they film all the shows, I think, except Black Lightning because I think Black Lightning is filming in Atlanta? I think, I think all so. the rest of them are filmed in Vancouver. And so you're talking about a massive studio, a massive warehouse uh, you know, lot that's just filled with thousands of people on a daily basis, and the CW does not want to be the company that shoves all those actors back together and ends up killing one of them because they got the coronavirus. Because yeah, no studio wants to be the one responsible for killing their own stars. So until they can be, you know, at least reasonably sure it's safe, we're not going to see the CW shows go back into production. So yeah, we're going to get stuff like this where they're they're picking up old once run shows and they're going to finish, you know finish stuff out and give us stuff that they've already got in the can, which, you know, luckily, uh, like the, the girl that stars in the new star girl show, she came on CW or came on uh, Batman beyond fat man beyond was talking to Kevin Smith and Mark Bernard and talking about the fact that the, you know, luckily they finished filming before all of this started. So their entire show was done. It was just in post-production. And so they got really lucky where they were able to finish their entire season before the shutdown happened. It's just a show that's really heavily relies on special effects, so they had a lot of post production to do, and they were meant to be a late season add on, which you know CW loves to do. But yeah, it's gonna be one of those things where yeah, the 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 delays, pushing everything off, waiting a year before shows come back, like it's it's gonna make for some weird TV seasons, like yes, because I think Flash ended up at some weird like twelve or thirteen episodes, like where I mean. And Flash is one of those heavy shows where they're doing, you know, 26, 28 episodes a season. Like, they have big fucking seasons. And they have this one weird one, you know, seven seasons in, like, where they did 11 episodes. But my my understanding of what they've been doing, at least, which might be helpful, is they kind of followed an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.-esque route where they're doing, like, mini arcs. So, evidently, yeah. they were just wrapping up one of those mini arcs and had planted <laughs> seeds for the next one. I, I'm, like, four seasons behind on Flash, something like yeah. that. But. And I did I did watch the finale live and they did a good job because, yeah, it's basically where they were at, like their what would have been like their midseason finale. And they just kind of wrapped it up mm-hmm. and they're like, OK, this is where this story ends. And so, I mean, you can tell that the writers were a little rushed, but I mean, they got it done. Like it yep. wasn't a bad ending. It's not the best ending of a season, but eh, it wasn't bad. Now, as for some insight into how things might progress when it returns back to filming, Steven's got some thoughts he shared with us. He's a bit closer to knowing what's going up going on that way he said here's another thing to consider these cw shows film in bc bc's restart plan doesn't have film until june to september part of phase three if things keep as they are not to mention border factors there's a big push in the production schedule are they really going to be able to work the actors back to back with the 2021 2022 schedule i doubt it they'll probably still want to schedule a decent break so how short will next season be yeah we're probably looking at shortened seasons which Makes sense. Yeah. Because, yeah, all those shows film in Vancouver, but the majority of those actors, you know, 
had enough warning, they all left Canada and they're all home, you know, in their homes in LA and Texas and wherever they live in the U S. So it wouldn't just be getting back to work. It's getting back to another country to go to work. So, I mean, that's not going to be a quick thing that you can resolve in a week. Well, I mean, that's part of the problem they've run into with AEW's stuff right now is their wrestlers that live in Canada can't get back to the United States for filming right now. So a bunch of their Canadian wrestlers oh, are yeah. back. That's why, like, the Dark Order hasn't shown up. Eve Luno and Stu Grayson, for instance, live in Canada. They can't get back to do filmings. So they could film, oh, like, some vignettes <laughs> and stuff like that. But a lot of folks who are not based out of the United States are having issues getting back. To be able to participate in those kind of things. It's a brave yeah, new makes world sense. we're in. I don't know about brave, but it's definitely a new world. And it's a stupid new world, but I'll get into <laughs> that at the end of the show. To to educate people. But I know you had more news. What do you got for us, Bachman? Then along with that, we got one more piece of news where every single person you've ever wanted is joining the Mandalorian. <laughs> Excuse me. Some people know him as the bad guy from Live Free or Die Hard. Some people know him yes. as the cowboy from Justified. Some people know him as the crazy husband from the San Clair to Diet. But to me, he will always be Mickey, the freaky Tarantino film student and murderer in Scream 2. Timothy Olafantastic is joining The Mandalorian. Um, we do know that The Mandalorian has finished filming. Um, on the Hollywood Reporter article, they talked about under the veil of secrecy, they finished shooting. Certain actor names have leaked out, including Terminator star Michael Bean, who might be involved in the new season. Um, we know that Tamora Morrison is coming back as the grown-up Boba Fett, who was the actor who played uh, the father Jenga Fett in the prequels. So it's awesome that, of course, the kid grew up to look exactly like his dad because, well, he's a clone. Why wouldn't he? Um, and we also know uh, from last week that uh, Katie Sackhoff has been confirmed. So yeah, the star of uh, Justified and Deadwood will be appearing on the show. Um, there has not been any confirmation of what character or what he's playing yet. But yeah, I saw a, I saw a nice uh, post on Twitter where somebody took a sh- uh, photo, and it's like the the galaxies of Star Wars character uh, encyclopedia photo where someone did a painting that just has like every single character in Star Wars, and underneath it it says. These char- bonus, these characters are joining the cast of Mandalorian. Because, yeah, at this point, like, who don't we have? Like, they're getting fucking everybody on that show. We got Calvary's coming back. Fucking Cara Dune's coming back. We got Katie Sackhoff. Like, every badass chick in Hollywood is joining that show. And, yeah, and now we're seeing all the stuff from the the new uh, the roundtable show where they show that, uh, like, apparently Pedro Pascal whacked his head on a piece of a set on the day that he was supposed to film his unmasking. So he had to go to the hospital, get like 16 stitches, and then come back and do that scene. So apparently one of those wounds on his face was actually real. <laughs> which, How did he get whacked? I, I don't know. I mean, I it's mean, they, entirely possible. They built a whole town. There's a mix of practical <laughs> and like their cool holograph, holodeck-like stuff that they've built. You well. could very easily hit your head off of like an overhang or something <laughs> for, say, one of the ships or things like that. That might well, have been part there. And it's extra funny because he's a character that on the show never takes his helmet off. This so if he had way. the fucking helmet on, he would have been fine. Because that's the way. <laughs> so he's walking back from his trailer with his helmet under his arm, doesn't pay attention to something, and fucking walks into a two by four and splits his head open. Now, and what, was... I, what I really <laughs> want to know is one thing. Go. What? What? what oh, how do they? Uh, how do they prevent chafing with the hel- wearing the helmet all the time? Because I mean, that's got to cause a lot of. Well, chafing. they can take it off when it's just them. Yeah. It's not yeah, that, the, but it's not that his character never takes the helmet off. It's that you can't take it off in front of somebody, and you're not allowed to, and an enemy can't take it off. Well, I know, but I mean, still, you're wearing it for the majority of your life. If it's a custom fit helmet and you're used to it, humans are adaptable. We can get used to almost anything. Unless it's a face mask that we ask people to wear, then it's the end of the world. Well, I did a 5K and I didn't even run, and my nipples still chafe like fuck. <laughs> How does something chafe like yes, the F word? But if, I'm confused. if you did a 5K every week, eventually your nipples would stop chafing because you would adapt to it. Or he'd get nipple tape. Or he'd get nipple tape. I can't do nipple tape. I'm surprised you don't have you'd a have drawer. To, you'd have to tape, shave actually. around them to have a uh, yes. free zone. Then you're, you could have your chest look like a raccoon, basically. Uh, sure. We'll, we'll call your chest Tom Nook. You don't like that one? I'm thinking of a joke and I'm just too <laughs> lazy to come up with it. So, 
Bachman's right. There's a crap load of people they've announced for Mandalorian Season 2. And there are some folks now that are still like, this is way too many people. This is the problem they had with Star Wars Rise of Skywalker. They went too fan service and tried to put everyone in there. To which I respond, have you watched Star Wars Rebels with Dave Filoni stuff? Which was, yeah. Season 1 is all world building. Season 2 is connecting it to the greater universe. And to the stuff that I did in Star Wars Clone Wars by bringing in characters like that. That's how we got Ahsoka in Clone Wars and things like that yeah. and Captain Rex. This is just how these things work. This is more Dave Filoni being awesome because guess what? Dave Filoni's fucking awesome. Nobody and gets at this Star point, Wars to yeah. better than Dave Filoni at this point. Yeah. At this point, Dave Filoni, he's not the dad of Star Wars because that's still George Lucas. He created it all. But Dave Filoni is very much the cool uncle. Yeah, right. He's been running this shit for longer than anybody. He's introduced more things to star wars than any other producer ever and it's almost all fucking awesome everything that dave filoni works on is great hell he was even in rise of skywalker and he looks weird because he's not wearing his hat oh yeah that's right he was, <laughs> and he, he was, i rewatched it and forgot the scene that he was in i'm like oh fuck that is dave filoni <laughs> and he was in mando also without his hat yep he yeah, he's one of those guys cool like Robert though. Rodriguez when he doesn't have a cowboy hat on, he looks strange because he's always wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah. So I understand where some people might have some apprehension on Mandalorian Season 2 and presumably Season 3. That Oh my god, they're putting all of these people in there. But remember, when Ahsoka showed up in Season 2 of, Cl of uh, Rebels, it was like an episode. Maybe an episode yep. and a half until she had a more prominent role in Season 3. So don't expect that because you see all these names here, they're going to be in every episode every week. Your only people you're going to have week to week are probably going to be Pedro Pascal and the child puppet. Everyone else yep. is going to be a ro rotating cast that filters in as the story calls for it and maybe stays for a couple episodes. Yeah, hell, we got Clancy Brown and Bill Burr as mercenaries in the first season. Fucking Bill Burr. Really? Yeah. The right. Monday morning quarterback? But yeah, they were mercenaries for one episode. It was fucking fantastic. We got Bobby from Sons of Anarchy in the same episode. It's fucking right. fantastic. <laughs> so... I understand concerns, but stand fast, hold the faith. And they did also announce that Mandalorian season two will not be impacted by COVID-19 and is still on target to release in October. So we have yeah. like what? Five months. Yeah. Cause it was all already filmed. It's just all, they're doing all the post-production. They got to, they got to finish putting in all the pew, pew, pews, right? <gasps> all the pew, pew, pews. Yep. That's my favorite pews. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The three pews. They got to put the shiny on the ships. Make everything look good. And then make it all look a little dirtier because you can't have it be too shiny. That's now, true. here's another question that uh, I thought of. Uh, so was Django like, ostracized from the Mandalorians? Because he had his helmet off in episode two, didn't he? So nah, we you're, you're arguing two different things. So this is... Are you saying this is not canon? Django... And Pedro Pascal's character, which I can't remember his name. Oh, I know they're two Jarn. separate characters. Din Djarin are two different types of Mandalorians. It's like oh, the difference between a Jew and an Orthodox Jew is how it's been explained oh. to me. Oh, okay. So I never heard that. So I, Because uh, Din Djarin was a foundling and owes his life to the Mandalorian that saves him growing up with them in the training camps, he decides to basically go full on 100% like traditional Mandalorian. So he never takes his helmet off. Django is old school, just like Sabine Wren on the rebel show where she took her helmet off all the time. So yeah, it's like the difference between someone that's, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, every, every, you know, an Easter Christmas Christian and goes every damn Sunday for communion and, you know, and guilt like every single weekend, like the difference in, there's still the same religion, but some people take it much more seriously. Right. So Din Djarin is basically a different sect of Mandalorian that adheres yeah. to a stronger code than the others did. And makes... they, I think they get into yeah. that a little bit in Clone Wars and in Rebels. We're talking about the Death Watch and things like that. Yeah. When they introduce so... some of the other clans. Because also the Mandalorians are a, it's, I mean, because it's not a species of person. It's like. Because Jin Jarn mentions, he's like, I wasn't born on Mandalore. He's like, I wasn't born a Mandalorian. I became a Mandalorian. Just like you can convert to Judaism. So the clans also have their own rites and passages and rules, depending on which clan you grew up in. Because the whole Mandalorians are different clans that have different sigil sigils. 
And so there might be some that are much more strict than others, depending on certain rules and stuff. So what I'm taking is the Mandalorians are space Jews. Kind they're, of. They're like a space warrior sect. Yeah. They're just they're, space they're religion, warrior Jews. Their their religion is their armor and their guns and fighting. That's just their religion is their martial art, basically. I was like, yeah, space in the, gun in, Jews. There in we the go. scene where they go to see the Jawas, he's like, you have to put your guns down. He's like, guns are part of my religion. <laughs> and he's not kidding. Like those oh, are part of his line. religion. He, he has belief in his rifle. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty badass rifle, BT Dubs. True. So, a lot of stuff coming. It's going to be good, presumably. I trust Dave Floney and John Favreau. They've proven they're a good team. Yes. I'm excited to see where it goes, and I'm excited for the potential spin-off things that are going to happen. Because, let's be honest, I think the reason some of these characters are appearing is because they want to do more with them in their own series. And the rumors are continuing to circulate that there's going to be a live-action series that centers around Ahsoka, Sabine, and Captain Rex looking for Ezra in the unknown regions. And I would watch the shit out of that. Yeah. The, the, it could be the coolest thing ever. Cause yeah, if you've seen the end of rebels, like what a fucking ending <laughs> Ezra Bridger with the giant. Fuck you. <laughs> I was just going to blast myself off into space. I ain't afraid of shit. That boy crazy. Then what do you expect with the only Jedi who has a gun built into his lightsaber? Had he didn't when he grew up, got older, but yes, that, that kid's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was also, uh, Darth Maul wanted to apprentice him also, let's remember. Exactly, yeah. He also hung out with Darth Maul. And I wouldn't be shocked if we get some potential for Darth Maul to uh, get something Disney Plus-wise that fills in some of that gap between Clone Wars and Solo, and then Solo and Rebels. Yeah. Oh, you mean a good movie Solo? I don't think I like Solo's Solo. a bad movie. I, like I think it's a movie that served no purpose other than putting I a Star Wars it. movie out. Did, yeah, that's not me saying it's a bad movie. I just don't think there was any... You don't have to watch it. That's right. It was Naki who hated it. Yep. The, and I had heard the difference between the Mandos as compared to Jews versus Orthodox Jews. And I think I like Drassman's thing in the chat room even better. It's like the difference between monks and Shaolin monks. Mm -hmm. So like they can all be practicing Buddhism, but some of them are hardcore into martial arts and other ones are just meditating. Yeah. And, and for those, before you get your angry emails sent into us or anything like that, oh, folks, send them, send yeah. them. Th this Anthony was... at Gunnick D got Tom. Bring him on. Bring him on. Got Tom. But in all honesty, the use That's of him, Judaism versus Orthodox Judaism was just to establish parallels and differences, not to be like a Mandalorian is a Jew or something like that. No. So please. Oh, no. Yeah. Don't, We've already don't... seen he's bad with his money. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, is that, <laughs> is, that, is that in bad taste just to say Jew? I don't know. I don't know. I, no, I really don't saying... know. I'm not saying anything disparaging yeah. about them. So yeah, I'm using it as a religious either. I don't fuck So them. yeah. Maybe he's got a problem with it. Eat my ass. Anthony at gunnageek.com. Bring on your bullshit. I ain't afraid. So you heard it here. Bachman's into anal. So that's right. he wants to be pegged with your tongue. I did not. That's not the oh, same God. thing. He said to eat his ass. Which now, is I don't not know pegging. how else to toss a salad unless you're going to stick a tongue in there. Otherwise, then... that's not pegging. Well, I mean, that's the next. That's that's the next step, buddy. I mean, come on. I, f I feel <laughs> dirty after doing that. I really do. <laughs> you could have just said that instead. Of had a button for you. No, nope, Chris. Chris has got a button for everything. Why do you have that buttons was for the your joke? Stuff? You dumbass. <laughs> Why do you have buttons for yourself? You tell him, Naki. I don't get. You tell him, Naki. You just re-say it. Why should he only have buttons for you? Maybe he likes having buttons for himself. Because then he could put words in my mouth. But now he's just putting words into his own mouth where he could do so himself. I don't, just don't understand. I'm not criticizing. I just don't understand. Well, if this you say it creepy. once, just write. Why not keep a copy of it? I only, I have, I only have two bumps on the soundboard creepy. that are my voice. The rest are mostly uh, Willie and Naki, to be honest, because they say <laughs> the most sound bump worthy things. Because... <laughs> Are you saying me and Naki are the more entertaining part of the show? That's why I just heard. Well, Naki is certainly the it. more We're entertaining part of the show. Uh, <laughs> <dear>. <laughs> we love you, Naki. Oh, you dick. <laughs> I, like I love you, all. Naki. I've touched my boobs to you. <laughs> I forgot that back half. Whoa! <laughs> I don't... 
I don't, I don't, I don't remember that, that quote. <laughs> what episode was that? I don't know. I just remembered the first half of it. I didn't know there was a second <laughs> half. Holy moly. I'm sorry about we that, got, Naki. <laughs> we got some no, boob touching not. back on ATGN. All right. <laughs> I'm not a gentleman. It's true. All right. All right. We, we overplayed this. <laughs> My goal is always to drive into the ground so that I don't get tempted to push the buttons later on in the episode. I'll be honest. There you go. That that doesn't ever help. Nope. Not even a little. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, you guys more or less likely or the same amount likely to watch Mandalorian in light of all this casting news? More likely. <laughs> same. Okay. I was more targeting that towards Willie. Because you've said yourself you're not really a huge Star Wars fan like a lot of other folks are that have been on the show, including myself. It ebbs and flows as to that level of fandom that I have. So I was honestly curious as to what you thought with all of this additional world building and pulling in other things you may not have watched. Whether that makes you go, oh my god, I've just got too much crap I need to watch to be able to understand everything that's going on. Or you go, oh, this is kind of cool. Uh, I mean, sure, it sounds kind of cool, but I mean, I don't really care about all the extra stuff myself i mean it's cool that's there for other people but i mean i just think man orange is a good show that's all it really needs to be okay. because i honestly I make, think that's yeah. a valid concern for some folks is that they go oh my god i don't understand who some of these people are do i need to pre-watch a bunch of this stuff to understand it my guess is you probably won't need to and i will say that this has an has had a side effect of my wife who hasn't watched the show and just kind of thought baby yoda was cool or excuse me the child was cool once she heard Katie Sackoff was going to be in there and a few of these other folks was like, oh, I might actually want to watch this now. I was like, so do you want to watch season one of Mandalorian then? <laughs> well, see, yeah, because I mean, you didn't really need to watch Clone Wars to get who Ahsoka was in Rebels. Oops. So you have to assume that they're going to give you enough information about Bo-Katan in the Mandalorian that you don't need to go watch Rebels to know who to understand who her character is in Mandalorian. Like, they're going to give you context clues. Well, and they sort of explain it, and especially the the confrontation with Vader at the end. You start to realize, oh, okay, this is Anakin's apprentice. And he refers to her as the apprentice, and she calls him Anakin. And you go, oh, it all comes together. So even if you yeah. didn't quite fully grasp who she was in the mythos, they put it in a nice little ribbon and tied it in a bow at the end. How yeah. many apprentices has he had? Damn. One. Well, uh, one is Anakin's. The Force Skywalker. Awakens. Force Awakens is... You mean... The Force Unleashed? No, the Force. Vader wasn't Shit. in yeah, the you're Force right. Awakens. Yeah, well, you're right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, Force Unleashed well, is not was. canon, though. So technically, it doesn't yeah. exist it anymore. It was all built uh, on that it was canon. Officially, Anakin Skywalker had one Jedi Padawan. Ahsoka Tano. Yeah. Now, yes, Force Unleashed was semi canon until Disney bought. Oh, yeah. And then pretty yeah. much said the expanded universe as you know it is gone and they have not reestablished the secret apprentice was garen malik or something like that i think that was his yeah. name, as a character it, yeah the, it's at uh, the universe. point where all of that stuff could be canon if they use it so that that's the thing is like it could be because i mean technically we got the clone version of palpatine like that was a dark horse comic book back in the day where he did that where he cloned himself and hid bodies all over the universe and clone tanks well, so and I think you'll that see that made part of that canon. You'll see them pick and choose the things that work for exactly. them. Dave Floney's been real good about it. When you go and watch Rebels and start seeing the things they pulled in and start making canon, like A Wing, well, not A Wing, uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn and things like that. Characters yeah. that only exist in the books that had a huge following. Grand Admiral Thrawn was a fantastic character that Tim Zahn created, what, in like 92, I think it was? 92, yeah. 93 with the heir to the. Uh, Heir to the Empire, I think, is what it was. Trill yeah. series or whatever. Which were three great book books. You're fantastic. And then the books. comic, the Marvel comics, where they introduced Thrawn, were also cool because they showed how he rose in the Empire. Right. That was a really cool comic. Which book. Which, after Dave Filoni brought Thrawn back for Rebels, they were able to do those books to establish his backstory and pretty much take everything that we liked from the books originally and apply it to that character. Now, the same things didn't happen because they're not necessarily canon. But he had pretty much the exact same personality, the same kind of mentality, he looked the exact same as he was depicted, things like that. So what I'm really confused about is they had all these stories in the extended universe, but they never capitalized on it. Why? But I'm talking about back then. 
Well, they did, but you got to realize we were in a different world back when the Expanded Universe came out. The thought there was, we're going to build up this book empire of selling books about everything that goes on because the actors weren't going to come back and play the roles. George Lucas didn't seem interested in doing any other media, things like that. And let's be honest, trying to do Star Wars on the small screen probably wasn't feasible until within the last 10 years or so because of the special effects it would require and things like that. And before George Lucas sold to Disney, he was looking at doing like a Star Wars television series he'd been talking about for a while that was supposed to be centered on like Coruscant with Bail Organa and a few other folks. Well, and plus back then he also had like the most open IP agreement with the fan base of any fandom in the world where sure. basically you could create anything in the Star Wars universe you wanted and as long as you weren't an asshole, he would allow it. Because like they did that version of what cops were they called troopers that was basically cops on Tatooine. Like now, it was hilarious. That wasn't it was canon, people in, but they did. Have no, I'm agree- saying yeah. it wasn't canon, but like he allowed everybody to play with his toys. Well, yeah, they, so, they had one of the best agreements ever, which was, and they even did like fan film awards that Lucasfilm was involved yeah. in for people that were doing fan films and things like that. And it was super open. Like he even partnered with Stephen Colbert on the Colbert Report for uh, photoshopping. Uh, he did this contest. Stephen Colbert was in front of a green screen with a lightsaber, and he's like, "Hey guys, photoshop me into scenes from different movies and things like that." And George Lucas comes on the show one time as they're wrapping up the green screen challenge and goes, well, I saw all the stuff that everyone's put out. He goes, here, I want to show you my my work. And he had actually commissioned a team at Lucasfilm and LucasArts to insert Stephen Colbert on the green screen into like the uh, arena battle in episode two and stuff like that. So it was pretty cool. But yeah, the agreement that Lucasfilm had with the fans, which was as long as you're not doing anything to disparage the property you have an open license to basically make fan film and fan product. You're good to go with that, which completely different than how CBS Viacom treated like Star Trek, for instance, they've shut down, shut down multiple fan productions. You claiming it violates their IP, which it does. They have the right to do that. And it was one of the biggest concerns that people had with star Wars. Once Disney bought them out, which was what are they going to do to fan bases? And for the most part, they haven't really shut down most of those fan videos. There was a Vader one, I think they shut down, but I don't remember all the specifics behind it. Yeah, because the only ones they've really gone after, as far as I know, is stuff that's ultra violent or anything that yeah, like disparages the brand. But it's not. They're not going to turn around and tell the five hundred first that they can't go do auctions and charities for kids with cancer. Like they're not. They're not crazy. They know that there's some parts of the fandom that they just can't fuck with. And so, yeah, you have the Mandalorian cores, you have the 501st, you have, you know, all these fan films that are being made. But yeah, I mean, there, there are certain ones that go after them if, you know, if it's, if it's vicious or too bloody, because they still want Star Wars as a whole to be attractive as a kid's property. Like, it's supposed to be movies for children. Like, a lot of people seem to forget that. <laughs> I think a lot of it comes down to as you as the fan filmmaker or whatnot, how are you trying to monetize said property? And a lot of folks, if it's yeah. like, hey, we just want to recoup cost to pay for production on it, I don't think they're coming after them. But if it's like, hey, we want to sell this on the internet, then that's when you would have a lot of these different companies probably come to you like, wait, 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 you can't just sell our IP to make yourself money. Yeah. You, there's then no you find out agreement. what... Then you meet the Disney lawyers and you lose. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, I'm really surprised. What is it? The super superpower beatdown things or whatever that the Bat and the Sun YouTube channel does. Those are fantastic. They're well done. You get cool things like uh-huh. Batman v Darth Vader. They're obviously monetized. They make money off of it, and that's great. I'm not saying they shouldn't. But my question that I've always had and I never really thought to ask was, how in today's world? has one of the companies not coming in and be like, nah, we're issuing a takedown notice or we're taking X percent of the YouTube monetization of it because it's our products. I'm sure they could. Why haven't yeah. they? Uh, th- this is the weird world you live in if you're going to try and play with other people's IP to make your own content. Yep. I'm not saying it's hey. a bad thing because those who own the intellectual property should be allowed to defend their rights to it. It's a very tough, nice edge they walk there, especially when it comes to Star Wars, because of how open it was. And if Disney starts coming in and shutting down a bunch of fan productions, they're going to be in a completely different world. Now, granted, the Star Wars fan base is toxic and trash as it is right now for a lot mm-hmm. of folks. So maybe now would be the time to do it because they can't get any more. They can't get any worse than they are in some aspects. 
And of course, my favorite one is Fanboys. Fanboys is a great movie. I love yep. that movie. Fanboys is good stuff. But you could tell, like, they didn't have the rights to uh, Star Trek, for instance, to do anything in there because <laughs> everything <laughs> well, that was Trek related did not quite look accurate enough. It looked like Dollar Store <laughs> yeah. Trek. And they even called that out, too. Yeah. Especially no, they, that statue. Yeah. I think they had come to some kind of agreement with uh, Lucasfilm at that point in time to be able to do a lot of what they did in there. I don't know. George Lucas had a very interesting take on how people should be able to interact with his creation. I don't think yeah. it's a take you're going to see a lot of folks have in today's world. No. And I don't know if that that take and feeling towards Star Wars is going to hold out long term after the acquisition. I honestly don't know. And most people that have an IP that's going to eventually make them a billionaire are usually not really happy about sharing it. Yeah, I mean, look at it from their perspective, though. Say I'm a kid, let's go down the Star Trek lane, and I love Star Trek. I watch some cool Star Trek, and the first thing that comes up when I look on YouTube is a fan production that's just shite. It's terrible. It doesn't look good. Granted, it might be a passion project, things like that. Then I'm a kid that goes, oh, I don't want to watch any more Star Trek or something like that. So, that, I mean, that's sort of why they have to defend these rights in some regard, is to ensure it doesn't get confused with their brand, which is why a lot of these things you have to put a disclaimer at the front of it that it's a fan production, or a disclaimer somewhere that it's a fan production, not a studio production so that that gets taken yeah. care of. Not like Draftsman official. says in the chat room, it's really weird who owns intellectual property. And what is considered fair use on said intellectual property. And then how much you want to spend to prove that it's fair use. If someone tries to tell you it's not. Especially uh, when they, especially when they call hand solo a bitch. I know. Right. I mean, but in all seriousness, it's why if you watch this show live or listen to it, the music we use, we cite Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com because it's a Creative Commons license, and that's how we get to use the music. And that's how we're able to use his intellectual property. Being able to use someone's intellectual property, there's going to be some kind of disclaimer or some path that has to be given. It's why we can't go and say, hey, since we're talking about Star Wars, let's overlay the Star Wars theme behind this the entire time we talk about it. No, no, no. no. That's a no-no. And it's not really fair use, and you're not really transforming it into something either. So it's all weird. It's just easiest to steer clear from it as much as you can when you're doing your own productions. But you can't stop me because I'm going to do it. That is true, uh, Willie. You, you're going to do it. He's going Godzilla mode. That is true. I, I thought that was more like the, uh, the Imperial theme. It was close to it, but it was off-brand enough we get away with it. <laughs> this this is the story of my life off brand uh, well I think we've talked enough about Star Wars that Willie wants to go to bed So, but before he can go to bed <laughs> Willie what do you got he wanted to share with us this week bitch I'm in bed already we can't tell because this is all we see of you I know I took the whole thing it's in my bedroom right now I'm just laying down lackadaisical and around underneath his ceiling fan just kind of rolling around enjoying the breeze Oh yeah, that, that has tiny fan blades, and those tiny fan blades are great for cooling you down. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing a lot of Dead by Daylight. Uh, going, I think I'm tier 30, 31, 32, somewhere in the uh, Battle Pass type thing, whatever they're calling it, Tome, yes, yeah, but it's really a Battle Pass. It's, it's a Battle Pass. The Archives. It's a Battle Pass. Yeah, which is a Battle Pass. Yeah, thank you. And um, uh, I did last night after playing some Dead by Daylight. I did watch Jay and Silent Bob reboot finally. Hey guys, it, we're doing what I'm into, I guess, right now. <laughs> oh shoot! I thought that's what you, I, my brain's already gone. I thought that's what you were doing. What, so, what was so the original question? I was throwing it to you for news, but this this works. This works. So oh yeah, I got no news, man. I thought we already established this. <laughs> man, his news is what he's getting into. That's right. his news. Yeah. So yeah, guys. <laughs> We're going to wrap up the show, and how we do that each week is a little segment called What I'm Into. It's our chance to share with you who are watching live or listening at a later date just what kind of geeky and or nerdy things we've been getting into so that you might want to go check them out yourselves. Now, Willie, let's get back into what you've been getting into. All right, let me start over again. So I've been playing a little... <laughs> uh, yeah, but I finally watched uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Uh, it's... It, it it definitely does what it's trying to do. 
And uh, it's an all right movie. It's no Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, but it's not trying to do that. So, yeah. Millennium Take- Falcon's cool, though. I give you that. I mean, they, 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 some of the jokes they kind of nail the problems, but then they're just making fun of the problems that they're having. If that makes sense. Well, that's the whole point. It's a reboot called Jane Silent Bob reboot. But it's not really a reboot <laughs> because they're continuing everything that came before it as well. While also making you pay money for the same story as Jane Silent Bob go to Hollywood to try to stop a movie. Which is literally another movie he already made. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the reboot yeah. jokes. Uh, still could have been better. Uh, that's what I, I, uh, I enjoyed it. But it could have been better. Uh, other than that... Uh, that's how I felt about a- the movie too, Willie. It was fun. Could have been better. I will be honest... Uh, Chris, who was in his early 20s or late teens, would have probably loved the shit out of it. Chris, who's in his 30s, goes, oh, okay, this is some callbacks to some stuff I really used to enjoy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I had fun with it. I was going to say something I wasn't going to say. Uh, I, mean, I laughed at it, but really enjoyed getting to see Jay do all the father-daughter stuff in it. Knowing that the heroin yeah. addict, who almost died and didn't make it to the rest of these films is now a father who has turned his entire life around with Logan Muse, and getting to see him play a dad in the movie was awesome. I, I just think it's a little bit more, a little too tongue-in-cheek. How's that? <laughs> it is Kevin Smith. Yeah. The king of, it, the king of meta. <laughs> too, it's, it, it dials that up even more so than nobody normally does. It's like they can't go five minutes without them looking at the camera like, yeah, you know what this is about. Yeah, well. I mean, yeah. I mean that literally. Yeah. They literally, every five minutes, look into the camera. Which they also did in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. They did it like twice in the entire movie. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's a little too, it's like dialed up. So it's like, it's literally every five minutes almost. <laughs> Uh yeah, but uh, other than that, uh, not much. I'm going. I'm out of here. <laughs> Willie's a little tired. I'll go next. We'll let Bachman oh, wrap things up. God damn yes. <laughs> I'll say so. And fuck off. What have I been getting into? I've been playing far too much Animal Crossing: New Horizons. I hit it big and was able to open up on the turnip exchange this week because I had turnips that the Nook boys were buying for like 430 or something like that. And again, the community continued to surprise me with just how well they reacted when I was on the exchange because I said tips were optional because I don't do that thing where I'm like, you got to give me three Nook Mile tickets or six gold ore or some ridiculousness before I let you in. I posted and said, yeah, come on in. Tips are appreciated, but not necessary. And I was like, I'll be away from my switch. So just toss them in the corner of things. And I would occasionally go and pick up tips. I think I ended up making about three million bells off of tips and then someone also tipped me a crown which is worth 1.2 million and said here you can sell this if you don't want it so the community again just was pretty good nobody was disrespecting my island or anything like that i had most of it fenced off but at one point i had taken part of the fence down so that i could move some tips and stuff out and i had one person that just ran around my island for 45 minutes doing what i have no idea because none of None of my money trees were shaken. None of my fruit trees were shaken. So they were just exploring, it would seem. So you have to give them access to your island to do this exchange thing. But, like, if they want to be disrespectful, they can't. So like, someone can just show up and, like, shit on your lawn. Like, what can well, they do? Well, I mean, it's not to that extent. But, <laughs> for instance, it's always, like, don't run through the flowers and things like that. Because if you run through the flowers, it, like, knocks the petals off them and stuff like that. Or people can yank the petals off to make things to craft with. Or if you have a villager who's upset, they can kind of recruit to take them to their island, things like that. So a lot of folks who are doing the turnip exchange, Willie's done it this way, Naki has and I have, we fence off paths from our airport to the Nook store, Nook's Cranny rather, where you go and sell the turnips, which when I fence mine off, you literally can't get into anything on my island besides just that path. You fuckers have airports? Jesus Christ, this game's insane. Yeah, well, that's how you get to someone else's <laughs> island is you get on a plane. You don't take a boat? No. They're it's a islands. Seaplane. Aren't they all islands? It's a seaplane. Like you can do and paddle your ass over there. 
I'm We're going to make a water landing. <laughs> it's okay because it's a seaplane. It's okay, it's seaplane. God <laughs> damn it, Wilbur or Orville. I don't know which one. Whichever one's which. one it is. But yeah, in theory, if if you don't block off your path, someone could cause a bit of chaos in your island. They can't like cut down trees okay. or anything like that. But they could go and ruin your flowers. Or they could go and take all the fruit down off your trees because you. They can could sell mess with money. stuff if they wanted to be dicks. Yeah, but there's nothing permanent they can do. So I had taken down the gate and I wasn't paying attention. Someone ran around my island in for like 45, 50 minutes. Just, I have no idea what they were doing, but they spent 50 minutes just exploring my island. And I think they bought some stuff at the, uh, at the tailor shop. But other than that, it was pretty hmm. simple, pretty nice. I mean, they can't do anything permanent, but they can definitely set you back a lot of days. Yes. In real life days. Yeah. And in this case, that isn't what happened. Whoever this person was that was running around was literally just exploring, which I'm okay with. I wish they could make it so you could open the island so literally all someone could do is go to the shops and they can't interact with anything else, but it doesn't quite work that way. And to Nintendo's credit, that's not a shot at them. They warn you of these kind of things when you do it because when you open your island in Animal Crossing, you can open it to your friends, your best friends, or to everyone with a dodo mm. code. And they warn you if you open it to everyone that it means anyone can come on there. Someone can come on there and start spewing <laughs> F-bombs or something like that in the group chat. Stuff like that. And they warn you. Pinocchio and his boys might show up and turn into a bunch of jackasses. Right. Uh, so other stuff I've been getting into. If you've been missing sports and you have a fondness for Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls run in the 90s. The last two parts, and I've watched the first eight parts of the Last Dance miniseries is this weekend on ESPN. It's co-done with Netflix. But I don't think it's I don't know when it's going to Netflix, but it is a 10 part one hour each documentary series about Michael Jordan and the last dance, the last season of the Bulls second three Pete. And they go and do callbacks to different eras in Michael Jordan's history and the Bulls history touch on his going to go and play minor league baseball, stuff like that. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal documentary. I've enjoyed the hell out of it. Uh, Michael Jordan is the ultimate basketball player. But he's also an asshole, and he owns it because he was an asshole to his teammates to make them play better. And don't try and be like, oh, Michael Jordan's the best ever. He's a nice dude all the time. No, no. Jordan himself pretty much says he was an asshole at times because it's what was needed to get people to do things on the team or to play at their best. He is one of the greatest athletes of all time, but he's not necessarily one of the nicest people of all time. It's a phenomenal series, though. I'm not even a huge basketball guy. And I've really enjoyed it. And if, if you just you, really miss sports, I do miss <laughs> sports. I haven't fallen down the rabbit hole enough that I'll start watching Korean baseball yet. <laughs> because in the mornings here in the United States, where I'm on the East Coast, but when I get up in the morning and start working by about six a.m., there's a sports talk radio show I like to listen to, which obviously can't do much sports. But they started talking because, like, hey, we got to talk about sports occasionally. Korean baseball is on, and the one guy keeps trying to bet on <laughs> Korean baseball. Not very well, but you can watch it, I think, on ESPN generally most mornings. There's Korean baseball on. Hmm. I mean, I guess it's something. Yeah, I mean, UFC was back this week, too. Again, they had a fight last <laughs> Korean night. baseball, UFC, and... Professional wrestling. And, and pseudo-wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> With no <laughs> audience. There's not a ton of... Well, <laughs> unless you're AEW who continues to use the wrestlers as the audience, which is a stroke of genius. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Because every match is a lumberjack match, baby. Yeah. Don't go outside the ring. <laughs> Other stuff I've been getting into. I haven't finished watching this week's episode of Dynamite yet just because I get distracted on things. But I'm very sad that Vanguard 1 is dead now. The circle that is inner destroyed him. It is very, very sad. sad. For those who aren't familiar, Vanguard 1 is Matt Hardy. Broken Matt Hardy's drone, who is one of his best friends. They destroyed him, and I'm saddened. Uh, other stuff. No! See, other stuff Who? I've been getting into is that uh, my Roku on my main TV has started flaking out from time to time. So I ended up buying an NVIDIA Shield TV and put that in there. Uh, it runs Android TV. Thing's a beast. It runs pretty much all my streaming services really well, except for Hulu for some reason. Hulu runs like trash on there, which there's absolutely no reason it should. But it came with a f bunch of free games from NVIDIA on their GeForce Now service. For those that aren't familiar, GeForce Now is like Microsoft's Project X Cloud. It's like the Cloud Play, was it Gaikai that I think they had for PlayStation Network? But it's basically cloud-enabled video gaming. And some of the free games they gave me was uh, Bioshock Remastered. So I fired it up just because I was curious. 
to see how well it worked. And it played really well. I mean, and what it does is it basically fires up Bioshock in their servers and it streams it down to my NVIDIA Shield uh, little set-top box that I paired a Bluetooth Xbox controller to. And it played really nicely. It's only 1080p, but it's 1080p at 60 frames per second. So it's pretty nice looking. Now, bear in mind, Bioshock's an older game. Even the remastered version is still an older game. But it was fun. It was fun to try out. It was free. And anyone can do... I found out GeForce's, uh, was it the GeForce Now service? Anyone can play these free games for an hour at a time, and then it just makes you get back in the queue to get a server slot. So, like, you can play, and, uh, what are the free games they had? Destiny 2, Fortnite, a few other things that are free that you can play on your cell phone, on your crappy laptop, for instance, because all the rendering is being done on servers. And it was interesting. And I think the longest I had to wait to get back in the queue was, like, five minutes. So, basically, hmm. you get a warning... And it starts telling you you've got like 30 minutes left. And the reason they have it timed is they want you to join what they call their Founders Club, which is for five bucks a month. You get to be at the top of the queue. You can play an unlimited number of hours at one time of any of these games. And where it is neat is um, you can play a bunch of your Steam games that way too. So like if you've bought a bunch of games on Steam sale, they have some of those games that exist in the GeForce Now network. So basically it launches up an instance of Steam, has you log in, and then you continue to play those games. So, like, for instance, I think it was Saints Row 4. I pulled up on Steam on GeForce Now, and it pulled my save game from the Steam Cloud. Stuff nice. like that. So it was cool. I don't know that it's necessarily going to be my go-to for playing video games or anything like that. It was more of, I wanted to try it out because this is a new toy. I'll probably play Bioshock through on it because I don't know where my discs are of Bioshock. And I really like that <laughs> game. I'll be honest. Uh, I will uh, specify something you said earlier. Uh Gaikai was a separate company than PlayStation Ball or Sony bought it. Correct. And that's what turned into PlayStation Now. Okay. I apologize. Just for a little specification. No, I no, appreciate you, that. That's understandable. It, this is a service, as far as I know that. Yeah, this is a service, like oh. I said, that's analogous to that, to Microsoft's project, the xCloud, that's in beta right now. Things like that. Because I've played Xbox games on my cell phone with a Bluetooth controller, and it was a good experience, and this was the same kind of thing. I have not tried GeForce Now on my cell phone yet. It will work on Bluetooth, excuse me, on Android cell phones, and I believe iOS as well. So in theory, you could pair a uh, Bluetooth controller to one of those devices and play your games on NVIDIA servers. It was interesting. It's worth trying. It's not going to be my default or go-to way of playing video games. And for comparison's sake, just so people understand how you can play games, on the shield is it has what is it their tegra x1 plus processor on it which is a processor that's a version better than what's in the switch for comparison's sake so it's a fairly nice. high powered streaming box i've enjoyed it uh other stuff i'm getting into uh i got in a pointless argument on the internet and just had to stop when <laughs> people were trying to tell me that you don't need to wear a mask. You'll be perfectly fine. The CDC said don't wear a mask. And I was like, they said that in like March and early April, then revised their guidance. So of course you would think that if you only cherry pick the news that says that, here's the mm. updated guidance. And then I was called a sheep and a douchebag because I cited various news sources that disproved them. And I went, well, you've obviously made your point of what it is you're going to believe. I'm not going to waste my time trying to. Well, I mean, they're not wrong guys. about you. Well, I mean, not well, for this, they are wrong, but I mean, in general, you are a sheep. And I'm a, a sheep, dick. huh? And a dick. <laughs> well, thanks, Willie. Uh, that makes me feel great. I All right, Couch. Still love you, buddy. That's <laughs> enough out of you, Couch. <laughs> All right, Bachman, wrap things up for us. What do you mean getting into? Uh, the launch of Season 5 Apex, which, you know, good and bad, mostly good. Um, annoyingly now I'm seeing the new era that everybody's run into this week where they made it to where once a day you can pull an extra adventure pack out of, uh, random loot bins. And so you'll open a loot bin to pull guns and stuff out of it. Like normal, uh, red box jumps out, lands on the ground and you can collect it. You pick up one each day. You have to get five of them to unlock the first, uh, actual PVE quest adventure that they've added to the game. And what they did yesterday on the fifth day of season five was when you pick up that pack, you then exit the match after you win or lose, and you get your screen summary from the match, and then you get a pop-up screen that says, hey, you picked up the fifth thing, you've unlocked the first adventure. And then you go back to the main screen, and you tab over to the quest line, and you go over it, it shows the first one is unlocked, because there's literally going to be 45 of these 
packs that you have to get. So you have to play 45 days basically in a row to unlock them all. You have to have five packs to unlock each week's quest. But then what they did was they added a timer to it on the fifth day saying this will unlock in two days. Which it's like, okay, well, that's kind of annoying. So even though I've done it five days in a row and you said it would take five to unlock the quest, I still can't unlock it for two days. So that bugged some people. But then the really annoying thing happened where I went in and played my next match and won the match and then got the quest summary. And then at after the games or the game summary, then after the game summary, I got the same pop up screen. Congratulations, you've unlocked your fifth pack. So every single time you finish a match, you get a pop up screen reminding you that you picked up your fifth adventure pack and that you can't go fucking play it for two days. So I really hope they fix that shit because it's damn annoying to constantly tell all of your players that, hey, you unlocked the thing we told you to unlock and we're not going to let you use it yet. Yeah. Other than that, almost all the season five changes have been awesome. Um, they changed the massive rotated guns in and out of the care packages again. Uh, Loba's fucking fantastic and fun to play. Her ability to teleport and use it to get high ground and move around the map and get out of fights is awesome. Um, just, yeah, a lot of the other balancing changes, the life changes, uh, the quality of life changes are really good. The new map's really fun. Just, just a fun all-around game. Um, and then, yeah, playing a bunch of DVD with Willie had, uh, last night I got, I think the first time I've ever done a perfect Freddy match. I got 8,000 points in all four categories, uh, hooked every single player three times, got a four kill. And then I was also running party streamers. So, and then got a daily done as well at the same time for another 30,000. So I think for the first time ever with Freddy, I got a perfect match and I earned like 110,000 blood points in one match, which was just awesome. Cause usually you're around like. 15 to 25,000. So getting that much in one match was just freaking cool. And then, yeah, I think I'm still way behind Willie. I think I'm at like level 21 or 22 of the archive battle pass. So I'm catching up, but I still got plenty to do. Got to do more killer and survivor stuff probably later today. And then um, there was something on Hulu where apparently it was just like a free couple days preview, but it didn't have like a timer on it or anything. So I didn't know, but I went to go check out uh, Hulu because uh, Bl uh, Blindspot was uh, showing again on NBC. So I watched that, you know, a couple days later on Hulu and went to go catch up on my shows. And all of a sudden, Silicon Valley was showing as an option. I was like, oh, shit. I always want to watch that. So I fucking I love Thomas Middlevich. I fucking love me some fucking. Um, uh, oh, my God. Kumail Why can I not think of his name? Kumail. Yeah. How can Martin I not think of his name? Yeah, I love Martin Starr, fucking Box of Frogs from fucking uh, The League. Yeah, I love, like, all those actors. It's like, oh, hell yes. So I started watching that. I got through the entire first season and, like, three episodes of the second season. And they also had uh, Ballers on there because it's also an HBO show. So I watched the first two episodes of that. And then on the third day, went to go check it again. And all of a sudden, they weren't listed in my continued watching. I'm like, what the fuck? And I go and I search for them. And they're now again locked in H in Hulu and it says, Why open these with the HBO app? So apparently it was just a preview that they didn't tell anybody they were doing. Hmm. I I don't know what it was. Strange. But I got I got through the whole first season. I'm half tempted once um I've never done my free week of HBO Max yet. So when I do, I think I'm gonna power through like five seasons of uh Silicon Valley because after watching the first season like, that show is just damn hilarious. And, yeah, I love Kamel. Kamel so, Nanjiani is one of my favorite people. I think it was, like, a preview weekend or something. Because I remember last weekend turning on my Apple TV and going to the TV app. And it was saying, hey, a free preview of all these HBO things I could watch through the Apple TV app also. Which included uh, Silicon Valley and a couple of the other things you mentioned, too. So, I think it was just a poorly advertised preview weekend that might have been across multiple mm -hmm. services. Which is also strange too, because you have all of those shows where you can get the like the add-on app to Hulu to watch HBO shows that are all going to be on HBO Max in like a week. But I don't so know if like, they all. I think some of them might not be the most recent ones until a later date. I don't know how it's all going to work. Yeah, it, I mean, all all the the streaming wars are starting, and it, it's going to be strange. And remember how <laughs> HBO Max works: is if you have an HBO subscription of some kind, you get HBO Max. It seems like so. Yeah, maybe that's partly them enticing you to sign up for one of those services now. I I don't know. I I don't understand their strategy, and it makes my brain hurt. 
Yeah, it's just it's just very weird. But yeah, so uh, watch all that, and then yeah, I'm gonna at some point I will definitely go back, finish Silicon Valley, finish Ballers. Uh, Jurassic mentioned in the chat room. Uh, Westworld also people have been loving that. I watched the pilot of that. That was really good. Uh, the weird thing was as I was sitting there uh, catching up on uh, Blind Spot, which is a show I love. They had another episode where uh, they brought back uh, Bill Nye the Science Guy because he plays Patterson's dad, which is fucking fantastic, and he was really good in this episode. Um, Hulu, you know, just auto play something else that's next in your queue. And when I had gone from my Hulu account to using a friend's Hulu account, I had added This Is Us back onto my, you know, in my my stuff is what uh, Hulu calls it, your playlist. But I hadn't gone into it and like fast forwarded to the episode I was on because I've watched the first like season and a half of This Is Us. But I had it in my queue, but I hadn't watched any of it. So it restarted on the pilot. And so I sat last night and rewatched the entire pilot to that show. It's one of the best pilots ever written. Like the writing, the performing, the acting. It's just, it's like the best start of a show ever. Like I can't think of a pilot I like as much as that pilot. Like it is such a good show. That's another one at some point I gotta, I gotta finish watching all of that because it's just a damn good show. And then uh, there was another big announcement that uh, at some point I'll be able to rewatch Avatar and I won't have to take out my Blu-ray DVDs anymore because now you can just go on Netflix and watch Avatar The Last Airbender because now the good Avatar is on Netflix. Right. So yeah. If you want some you want some fun yip yip, get some, you know, martial arts adventures with a crazy bald kid, you can now watch Avatar on Netflix. So yeah, at some point I'll be starting that this week. But yeah, lots of good stuff to watch. And then um I did get uh I watched Underwater, which wasn't half bad. If you go in with low expectations, it's pretty cool. Um, it was actually, yeah, it reminded me of like the summer of 1989 where, where they had three underwater monster movies all came out the same summer because, you know, studios just like to copy each other. But I remember correctly, 89 was the summer of the abyss, Leviathan and deep star six. So yeah, it was, that was a crazy year. But yeah. Underwater wasn't bad. And then, um, I got, uh, last night I was scrolling around Amazon and stuff. I ended up buying a uh, guns akimbo. And watch like the first 20 minutes that before I went to bed. I'm um, looking forward to finishing that because, yeah, Daniel Radcliffe is in this crazy world where it's like a, a murder spree TV show is happening called Schism. And he wakes up with guns drilled onto his hands. Like, it's it's a hell of a fucking start to a story. It's fucking weird. I'm interested to see how it ends because it is some weird, weird shit. And then um, I watched the first three episodes, I think, of Solar Opposites. Which is the new uh, animated series from um, Justin the, the co yeah Justin Rowland, the co creator of Rick and Morty, and I won't say I don't like it. Like I do like it. I did laugh at some of it, but I'll be honest. It feels like a bunch of alien B story that they couldn't fit on Rick and Morty, and so they give them an entire another show. Like it on it. Like it really feels like the whole it, thing could have just been B story. It doesn't help that the one alien basically sounds like Rick. Also, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. But Justin Rowland doing the voices again. Yeah, it's like well, the main alien is just Rick, so it's just another. It's just another main show where there's an asshole in charge who sounds like the same guy who makes weird decisions, and then the world has to deal with it. And then other than that, I've been getting into a uh, uh, a few mail calls because uh, the pre-orders have started arriving. So I have now received the black series tiniest figure ever i have the mandalorian the child who comes with his bone broth and his frog and a little tiny metal sphere that's the top of the gear shifter from the razor crest see i now have the i now have the two tiniest figures because also uh in the black series when they uh did the last movie they introduced they gave um they did the c3po with the bandolier and uh chewy's gun who comes with Boba Freak or Babu Freak. So I have Babu and the child now. So I have the two smallest toys in the black series. I'm pretty sure there's no way they'll ever do anything tinier than those. But yeah. I now have the child, which at this point I figure with that one's showing up, the Funko pop should be showing up pretty soon. Here come all the pre-orders, man. Cause Oh, I pre-ordered so much shit back in December. I have no idea how many things are about to show up. But yep, that's what I'm getting into. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's kind of nice every once in a while I hear a knock on the door and I go look and there's just a box sitting there it's like ooh what did I order Nice. plus also I still have like 70 kickstarters pending that haven't <laughs> arrived so yeah random shit just shows up well guys that being said I think it's about time for us to start shutting things down you guys can't see Willie on video but he does look like he might be passed out and I'm kind of hoping that's the case quite possibly I do have one more thing oh, nah, what I do you got I forgot 
<laughs> so uh, I forgot to mention this. I started since it was free for PS Plus. I was like, fuck it, I'll give it a try. Farming Simulator 19. What's the uh, uh The tutorial sucks balls. <laughs> it gave me two different <laughs> objectives, and then it just said, you figure the rest of this shit out. We're not even going to tell you how to what what buttons to press or anything. It's convoluted, and the tutorial sucks. I might try the tutorial again because it's something mindless to pass time, but we'll fucking see. I'm going to take a nap on mindless, it. Mindless Animal Crossing is probably well, still I mean, your best bet. It's a, it's a farming something new. simulator. Why would you play a farming simulator? Do you know how popular that is? Yeah, it's an incredibly popular game. Oh, look, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I was too busy with my laundry simulator. Like, the fuck is with these people? There's also like, a workplace simulator, which was uh, on VR also. Motherfuckers. Are you talking about job simulator? Job simulator, that's it. Which is not is not an actual simulator. There is, at don't all. forget, there's so also much fun. Willie, there's also a trucking simulator that's out there too. Oh, that's the one. And also what's that train simulator? It's very famous in uh yeah. Europe. Yeah. I so think uh it's a whole the, genre the that people DLC love. for it is like two hundred thousand dollars worth of if you got every single stuff for Ford. It's an exuberant amount, maybe twenty thousand. I don't remember. It's a large amount of DLC and the cost for it is very high for some reason. People <laughs> love it. You are only God in the chat room. My roommate oh played my farming God. simulator for like three months straight. <laughs> I mean Yeah, but that's because your roommates are crackheads. Supposedly it's one of those things that you just kind of get into this rhythm of doing things and you know how we like to do mindless things sometimes it only take like a certain percentage of your concentration, like sharpening a knife or something like that. It keeps you busy, but it's not like overly engrossing. I think that's what this is to a lot of folks. And then there's probably other folks that like this is one of their favorite Damn. games. And it's just not my taste. I think I bought it on iPad for like a dollar ninety nine and played for an hour and I was like, Yeah, no. No. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll stick with my mining and no man's sky while I listen to podcasts. There you go. Well, that all being said, I think we're about to shut this thing down. You guys have any final thoughts for our audience before we kill things off? Loba is thick. Billy, you got anything for us? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's asleep now. The couch is finally asleep. Well, couch, we're glad you could join us today. We're glad, Anthony, you could make it. And I'm glad that the folks in the chat room could make it. I saw Steven there, Draftsman, Your Only God. There might have been some other folks I missed. If so, I apologize. Thank you so much for joining us. A friendly reminder, we do stream this show live every Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at Geeks.Live. That is the official streaming home of the Gonna Geek Network. We do encourage you, go check out some of the other content we've got there. But I think we're done. You guys, any final thoughts as I get ready to push the button and play us off? Have a good night. Have a good nap, Willie. Willie's already asleep, I think. So we're going <laughs> to we're gonna play him out with some music so he gets ready for bedtime. Be like Willie. Get a good nap in, folks. Just not while listening to us, we hope. We'll see you all next week for some more horse shit and shenanigans. Back I don't care if you watch while we're Thanks sleeping. Thanks for listening to this brand new episode of the All Things Good and Nerdy podcast. Don't forget, we'll be back next Sunday live at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, over at live.atgnpodcast.com, channel 3 of the Alpha Geek radio app, and over at our network home at gunnageek.com slash live. If you have any feedback for the show, please contact us at atgnpodcast at gunnageek.com on our hotline number at 304-806-ATGN, or even better, go to Twitter and send us a message at ATGN Podcast. The music you've heard in this show is produced by Kevin McLeod and can be found at incompetech.com. 